a disappointing end to a holiday weekend. Take a look at the boards up here. Yeah, it's still very active. We've got yellow crime scene tape still up, water still flowing from these fire trucks here. And investigators on scene just trying to figure out what happened at this Teal home. Sherry, well, I got the little carrier. I need you to drop things off at my desk. I'll bring them here to the post office for you, okay? Yay. Deal? Yes. <laughs> Walking to and from our cars throughout the day. We do it so often. We may be looking at our phones. We may be looking and grabbing our keys. But we spoke with self-defense experts, and they tell us that when you're in transit, you could be a target. A 27-page report by the Thomas B. Fordham Institute. And as far as America's best and worst metro areas for school quality, Las Vegas, we rank 49 out of 50. I am here, you guys. I'm on the shuttle. I've got my popcorn <laughs> and jujus. Take a look at this nice shuttle. And this is... Well, in court on Tuesday, a discussion on Eric Holland's long criminal history that started in the 1970s. The prosecution listed charges for every decade, all the way until his most recent arrest for murder. Teachers we spoke with, well, they have mixed feelings about returning to school after a five day pause. You can see teachers arriving here at Valley High School. It's no secret. Those traveling back to California from Las Vegas face major traffic issues on I-15 southbound. But now, short-term relief is on the way. He just called and asked and said, can you focus on this? And then he followed up. He said, he followed up within a couple days. That call Governor Sisterlag made to California Governor Gavin Newsom has prompted action. For five miles south of the state line, the shoulder will turn into an additional travel lane. This is a $12 million investment for California from existing funds. Work will begin in spring 2022 and wrap by summer 2022. It feels great, and I can't thank Governor Newsom enough and California for what they've done. Governor Newsom says there are talks with Brightline for a long-term solution for high-speed rail and discussions with agencies and local jurisdictions about more road expansion in years to come. However, this immediate expansion is expected to help ease freight troubles. It should help get, you know, the uh, semis moving from the Long Beach and from L.A. up to Las Vegas. So hopefully it'll help all the way around with just the general traffic flow and supply chain is a big part of that. As this helps truckers, tourism will benefit as well. Many have experienced or heard about the 8 to 12 hour delays back to California. Hopefully when you're looking at the Labor Day traffic or maybe the 4th of July traffic, this will already be in place. So it's going to go a long, long way towards one, cutting down on the time, the travel, and two, making it safer. Bianca Holman, live local now. Preserving the history of Nellis Air Force Base and the airmen who've called Las Vegas home. Well, Bianca Holman reports on the process at the military installation. Airplane and jet takeoffs and landings are normal sights and sounds across southern Nevada, many originating from Nellis Air Force Base. While the base is most known for the Thunderbirds, Nellis has a rich history that is important to the growth of the valley. I look at Nellis Air Force Base as being the equivalent of having all the Ivy League schools in one spot for our pilots. Uh, whatever weapon system it is, whatever aircraft they're flying, the very best come here to learn. The very best of those stay here to teach. Jim Fluke is the historian for the 99th Air Base Wing. He not only keeps record of the heritage, but also recent happenings at the base. Nellis Air Force Base was dedicated in 1941. At that time, it was called Las Vegas Gunnery School. And in 1950, it was renamed Nellis Air Force Base in honor of First Lieutenant William H. Nellis who grew up here in the valley and graduated from Las Vegas High School. And I think the thing that would have mattered to him was this idea of personal sacrifice. And I think that's the kind of thing um, somebody who's been through that would, would look at our active duty airmen today um, and be proud of what they continue to do here. More airmen and women are honored with street signs and even buildings. This facility, Boyd Hall, is named after Colonel John R. Boyd, who created a theory called UDA, observe, orientate, decide, and action. We've designed a memorialization program to honor those airmen who have been examples. We want to connect the airmen who are serving today to those who have excelled, those who have sacrificed 
in the past. Servicemen and women come from all walks of life. And just as gaming and our great outdoors are an integral part of Las Vegas history, so is the heritage of Nellis Air Force Base. I think that starts not necessarily with memorials and monuments, but it starts as you look to your left or your right out your front door. For many people, uh, you look to your neighbors, and those are some who are serving. Bianca Holman, live, local, now. I was coming home from the sanctuary and was looking out the window and saw a truck full of pigs being taken to slaughter, and that was just it. I, I, it was just that moment I was like, right. I am never eating meat again. Diana Edelman is one of more than 9 million vegans in the U.S. She chose to go meatless for animal rights, but for many others, it's health related. It's becoming more accessible now, now than ever. So it's, it's really cool to see and to kind of see more people go vegan now that there are easier ways to do so. Whether it's weight loss for the environment or to improve heart and kidney health, vegan cuisine is growing in popularity. From fast food joints like KFC's new vegan nuggets to vegan Girl Scout cookies. And now plant-based dishes can be found at fine dining restaurants. A lot of the team members that joined us to, to open berries uh, are vegan actually. And we wanted something to, to cater to them and to their families when they came in because that's important to us. Uh, so it, it started off selfishly and then it became something that, that was pretty important. Yassine Louaby from Barry's Downtown Prime at Circa says they've had a great response from the vegan community. He says restaurant staff is trained on how to properly serve health conscious clients. No longer are they a second thought in the world of hospitality. It's not just a trend, it's, it's a way for us to show respect and pay homage to that lifestyle or to that, that moral a choice to become a vegan or whatever the case may be for anyone who wants to become vegan. To see these big name restaurants embracing this really shows you what the future is and also I think sends a message to other restaurants that you know you're gonna have to catch up now. During Las Vegas Vegan Dining Month a portion of the proceeds from participating vegan restaurants will be donated to the Churchill Foundation. Bianca Holman, live, local, now.